Yo, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing well. Today we're gonna to talk through a pretty complicated topic called instruction level parallel parallelism. For the rest of the video, I think I'm gonna say ILP because it's really hard for me to say parallelism, so ILP, okay? ILP is a pretty advanced topic and it's usually out of scope for 99% of developers out there. And it's one of those magical things that we just have to accept and it's always happening for us. Instruction level parallelism is a technique on the compilers and on the hardware level. So it's one of those collaborative techniques, kind of like virtual memory where it takes some software power as well as hardware power. And we're gonna talk through ILP in this video. Before watching this video, if you haven't checked out my two CPU or processor videos, I would highly recommend just going over there and checking out those videos right now. A lot of the things I talk about in those videos are, I'm assuming you understand those before you watch this. All right, if you're ready to learn a little bit about ILP or instruction level parallelism, let's just get started. All right, so for the duration of this video, we're gonna use the CPU to a chef analogy to explain this concept. Remember, a CPU is like a chef working in the kitchen. If you give a chef four arms or six arms, it's equivalent to beefing up and giving a CPU bigger and better hardware. If you put two chefs in the kitchen, that's equivalent to dual core. If you put four chefs in the kitchen, that's equivalent to quad core. Today, we're gonna start with just one chef working in the kitchen and he's gonna be making a salad recipe. This salad that we're gonna be making is a pretty simple salad. It just has tomatoes and lettuce so it doesn't taste very good, but two things have to happen before we get this salad ready. We have to cut the tomatoes and we have to cut the lettuce. All right, to make this salad, we're gonna need a recipe. Remember that the chef, he's a beast. He can do a ton of things, but he can only actually execute whatever's on the recipe. Remember, the recipe is our software and the chef is our hardware. And the chef is gonna execute this tomato lettuce salad recipe today. So let's get started with this. We have one chef in our kitchen right now. Normal chef, he only has two arms and he's gonna start making the salad recipe. First thing he's gonna do is gonna cut the tomatoes, which takes 10 minutes. And then he's gonna cut the lettuce, which takes another 10 minutes. So all together, the salad's gonna take 20 minutes to make. Okay, so 20 minutes making a salad, we're gonna beef up the chef by giving him some more hardware. We're gonna actually give the chef two more arms. So he has Four arms now, four arm chef. Now with four arms, the chef's gonna be able to cut and do more things at the same time. Two arms can cut the lettuce and the two other arms can cut the tomatoes. So all together, the salad's gonna take half the time, right? 10 minutes to cut both things and the salad's gonna be done in half the time, 10 minutes. So what exactly did we do here? Well, the concept is pretty simple. We pretty much beefed up the chef or gave the chef more hardware, just like giving a CPU more hardware, and we could complete the tax more efficiently. Now remember, beefing up the chef is not the only way to make your computer system or processing power more efficient. What if we kept the chef with only two arms, but we actually put two chefs in the kitchen? So we have a dual core kitchen with two chefs and each having two arms. Now if we had two chefs, each with two arms, one could cut the tomatoes, one could cut the lettuce, it would still complete in 10 minutes, right? The moral of this story is that there are many ways to make your processor more efficient. You could either beef up the processor and give it better hardware, just like giving an arm to a chef, or you could actually duplicate the processors and introduce multi-core, which is just sticking more chefs in the kitchen. All in all, whatever technique you use, multi-core, new hardware, you're just making your processing power more efficient. Okay, let's just go back to our example. We have a chef in the kitchen and he has four arms, right? And it took him 10 minutes to make this salad because he could do the lettuce chopping and the tomato chopping at the same time. Remember that this chef, he's a beast. He has four arms, but he always has to follow the recipe. And it's very likely that the recipe could be a really shitty recipe. Remember that this recipe is the software and software, as you all know, there can be some shitty software and there can be some good software. We're gonna get a new recipe for this salad and it's gonna say this. First, cut the tomatoes with two of your arms, but don't use the other two arms right now. 
after you're done cutting those tomatoes, now you can cut the lettuce with two arms. But this whole time, there was two of my arms that weren't even utilized. So what just happened here? I got a really crappy recipe, right? Even though I have four arms, I was only utilizing two of them at any point in time. So I had to cut the tomatoes first, and then I had to cut the lettuce. And the recipe still took me 20 minutes. Remember that this recipe is the software and the chef is the hardware. If the chef gets a crappy, crappy recipe, there really isn't anything he can do about it. No amount of beefed up hardware, four, five, six, ten arms, is gonna make up for really crappy software. If we get a crappy recipe that tells us to first cut the tomatoes and wait, and then cut the lettuce without utilizing all our hardware, then things are gonna take a lot longer, right? This is kind of where the intuition behind instruction level parallelism comes in. It takes the collaboration of hardware and software together to make things as efficient as possible. The first part of the collaboration, the hardware part, the hardware has to physically have the capabilities to support some kind of parallelism, right? In our first use case, when the processor only had two arms, or sorry, when the chef only had two arms, he could really physically only do one thing at one time. Okay, so that's the first thing we have to remember. For ILP to even be possible, we need the appropriate hardware to even make that parallelism possible. And secondly, on the software side, remember, we always need good recipes to utilize our hardware. If we have four arms, but the recipe is only telling us that we can use two arms at a time, we're not gonna be really efficient. We need some good recipes and good software to enable this type of parallel work. Lucky for you developers though, that almost every single piece of machine code that a CPU executes, it's already translated into crazy low level machine code that we never have to worry about. A compiler already optimizes the crap out of it. Unless you're designing a compiler or maybe you're designing a system that generates raw machine code, you probably don't have to worry about ILP. Okay, so imagine you're the recipe writer for this salad recipe. You actually wrote the program that creates this tomato and lettuce salad. This recipe is so simple that when you wrote it, did you even, were you even aware that it was gonna be executed in parallel? This is kind of the magic or secret sauce behind ILP. It's just happening under the hood for you. When we're writing our software, we don't really know what or what can't be run in parallel. We trust that the compiler is gonna do a really good job and the hardware is gonna be utilized. We just trust it and it usually happens pretty well. All right guys, that's some more magic for you. Hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, just post a comment down here or drop me a like. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and as always, have a great week and have, yes, just have a great week. I don't know. All right, guys. Later.